God, what a day. It all started badly. Got a flat tire on the way to take the kids to kindergarten. The traffic was terrible and finding a safe place to change the tire was quite difficult. Screaming children, blaring horns, wet roads and muddy conditions all made for a very unpleasant ride. It got worse and worse. I was unable to drop my children off at the drop-off area due to a flat tire. I had to park two kilometers from the kindergarten and walk them to the gate. This caused my day to start off on the wrong foot, and the rest of my day got worse and worse. I was so exhausted when I finally sat down at my desk that I entered the wrong password on my computer. An hour wasted trying to call support. I was chasing my tail, falling further and further behind. The printer malfunctioned and my month-end report was a crumpled mess. I had to miss lunch and my client for the day didn't show up. The children cried when I picked them up from kindergarten. It took me forever to calm them down. All in all, it was a very bad day. At least I'm almost home now. I started to relax. The kids seemed happier, which meant I was going to have a cup of coffee and get a chance to really relax. As I pulled into the driveway, my irritation levels skyrocketed. There was a beat-up old car sitting right in the middle of our driveway. Not to the side so I could pass, but right in the damn middle. I had to park on the curb and walk inside. After unbuckling James and Louise, we walked down the driveway. Next to the car stood a young woman with a small child in her arms. Maybe, at most, he was three years old. She slowly walked towards me, her face flushed with worry. Mrs. Andrews? Yes. And who could you be? I snapped, unnecessarily. If she had parked in a sensible manner, I would have been much more polite. My name is Danny, she said hesitantly. With a nod of her head, she introduced the child perched on her hip. And this is my daughter, Marissa. I smiled, trying to look interested. In fact, all I could think about was how much I needed that damn coffee and how I could get rid of her. Nice to meet you. How exactly can I help you, Danny? She looked around, especially paying attention to the children. Perhaps we could talk inside. This is rather delicate. Personal matter. Seeing her growing apprehension, I pointed to the front door. Very good. Also, I must warn you. I was having a terrible day, so this better be important. Inside, the kids ran to their rooms, leaving me with Danny, who headed to the dining room. You have a wonderful house, Gabriel. It's truly wonderful. Confused, I muttered something with a mixture of curiosity and irritation. How do you know my name? She sat Marissa down in a chair and slowly stood up. Ronald told me. Surprised? I muttered awkwardly. Do you know my husband? She nodded. Yes, that's why I'm here. This whole scene made me very nervous. And why exactly this? I asked anxiously. She took a deep breath and stared straight at me. This is going to sound selfish, but I need Ronald to fulfill the deal he made with me. He promised to pay for Marissa. What do you mean, pay for Marissa? Why in the name of all that is holy did he have to pay anything for your daughter? Because he's Marissa's father, and he promised. She stated this as if nothing had happened. It was as if she was talking about nothing important. I didn't notice that she stepped back as the words echoed around the room. Stunned and almost speechless, I barked back at her. I'm sorry. How dare you come here and make such inflammatory statements? I'm sorry, Gabriel. I didn't want to come here today, but I had no choice. Ronald made me a promise, and he broke it. He refuses to answer my phone calls or text messages. I tried to contact him at work, but they just brushed me off. All I want is what he promised. Look, Danny, I don't know what game you're playing, but it's not funny. The kettle, boiling, distracted me for a moment. Is this some kind of stupid prank? No, Ronnie, this is Marissa's father. He promised me that if I didn't say anything or didn't name him as the father on the birth certificate, he would give me a weekly allowance. Over the past two and a half years, he has fulfilled this obligation, but two months ago, he stopped paying and is now hiding from me. You expect me to believe this? My husband. Ronnie, is this your daughter's father? She nodded slowly. 
I'm sorry, Gabriel. But yes, it is. I didn't want to come here today or cause trouble. I couldn't think of anything else to do. It was one of those moments where thoughts were racing through my head and nothing made sense. Why in the name of all that is holy should I believe you? She reached into her purse and pulled out an envelope. Maybe this will help you believe. I poured us both a cup of coffee. What kind of coffee do you like? With milk and two sugars, please. I sat down next to her at the table and pulled out a couple of documents from a thick envelope. I gasped in shock. My hand started shaking and I couldn't stop it. Staring at me was a DNA report that said in black and white that Ronald Andrews had a 99.9% .9 chance of being Marissa Featherstone's father. Oh my God, this can't be true. I felt like life was leaving me. She winced. I'm sorry that I have to do it this way. If he had kept his promise, I would never have betrayed his trust. When was the last time you saw him? I asked through clenched teeth. If you're asking when was the last time we had sex, the answer is three months ago. I took a long sip of coffee, trying to hide my anxiety. How long have you been having an affair with my husband? Four years. Lord, what do you hope to achieve by coming here today? Are you trying to force us to get a divorce? Is it revenge? What is this? No, revenge was never my intention. When Ronnie and I started dating, he told me he was divorcing you. I would never get involved with a married man, but he convinced me that your relationship was dead. He has already started divorce proceedings. Lying bastard, I muttered angrily. Our marriage was strong, or so I thought. How often did you see him? At first it was about two nights a week when he would stay overnight with me. Over time, she hesitated. Sometimes he stayed for a whole week. There are almost no other options at all. You had an affair? How did you get pregnant? Of course, you took precautions. Yes, I took the pills, but I developed a yeast infection, and the doctor advised me to stop taking the pills until it cleared up. So, for several months, we relied on condoms, but one evening he took me to a nightclub. We got drunk, and I don't know, I guess he didn't put it on properly. Either way, the end result was Marissa. She reached out and ruffled her daughter's hair. I saw love and pride in her eyes. Okay, Danny, let's assume that I believe everything you said. What was the purpose of your visit? Gabriel, I don't have much money. I was at university when I met Ronnie and fell in love with him. With Marissa, I can only work a few hours a day. This is not enough to live decently. I do receive single mother's benefits, but only because I refuse to give my father's name. That's less than half of what I'd be entitled to if I'd named him. So, Ronnie made a deal with you? I stammered incredulously. Yes, and, as I said, he paid them regularly for two and a half years. I think we started having problems after Marissa was born. I insisted with all my might that he formalize your divorce. I loved him and wanted to live together. Did he tell you that's what happened? Yes. Look, I'm sorry, okay. I was stupid and head over heels in love. I believed him. Only recently did it become obvious that he had been leading me by the nose all this time. I feel stupid. It is obvious that he is completely indifferent to me. How much money did he give you? $500 a week. What? I gasped in complete shock. We've been struggling to make ends meet for the last couple of years. I went back to work full time because things were so stressful. All this time he gave her money. You say you were in love with him. Did he tell you that he reciprocated this love? Yes. She almost burst into tears. He was so loving and wonderful. I'm sorry, Gabriel. I know this must hurt. Of course it hurts. You come to my house and tell me that my husband is in love with you. God, you're a two-faced bitch. No, you have to believe me. I didn't come here to cause trouble. I know I must look like a stupid girl. Trust me, that's exactly how I feel. All I want is what he promised me. I don't care if I never see him again, but either he pays me or I go to court with the DNA test results and name him. Then he will be responsible for the full maintenance of the child. With my anger now on the verge of breakdown, I hissed. Danny, I suggest you do exactly this, because after today, he will not live here. 
She winced painfully. Gabriel, I don't want to destroy your family. This was not my intention. Oh, for God's sake, you can't be that stupid. What were you thinking? What do you think should have happened here today? She stared at the table, spinning the cup on its saucer. I just want him to keep his promise. You thought I would just accept the fact that my husband had an affair with you and became the father of your daughter? And would I be happy about this? You are a stupid child. I'm going to take every last cent he has. You don't have to do this, Gabriel. I do not want him. In fact, I will never speak to him again. He used me, and now he wants to wash his hands of it. Danny, hand on heart, I don't give a damn about you. You're nothing to me, and I just don't care. You can get in your car and drive away. I don't have money to give you. I had to go back to work, send my own children to kindergarten. The time I wanted to spend with them, I had to do it because of the money he gave you. So please, before I call the police, go ahead and take all the necessary steps to get your money. But never, and I really mean never, set foot in my house again. She quickly stood up. Tears streamed down her face. She grabbed Marissa's hand and headed for the door. At the door, she turned around and sniffed through crocodile tears. I'm sorry, Gabriel. You lying, little bitch. You came here for only one reason. Revenge. Nothing you could say would make me think otherwise. You knew damn well I wasn't going to give you any money. You came here today with only one intention. To hurt me and get back at Ronnie. In the future, stay away from married men. Her car gurgled and coughed as it came to life. My blood pressure rose exponentially as I watched her drive away. What a bastard. All this time he led a double life. I thought he was traveling for work. Three days a week he traveled to remote regions to check the work. He completely convinced me of this. I was the epitome of a clueless wife. For God's sake, he had a daughter. While his real family was struggling. I worked late so we could try to make progress. He was having fun with this girl, and I was paying for the privilege. I rushed into the bedroom and pulled out as many suitcases as I could find. Opening them, I stuffed his clothes and personal belongings into them. I rolled them out onto the front porch. The kids gathered around as I continued to put away his things. By the time I finished, there was a small mountain. Mommy, what's going on? I'm scared, Louise cried. Ronald's car pulled into the driveway. He climbed out with a look of curiosity on his face. What are these bags, and why is your car parked on the street? The bags are yours, idiot. All your clothes are there. You can come back and pick up the rest of your things next week. What the fuck, Gabby? What the hell has gotten into you? He said, and irritation showed in his every word. I'll tell you what hit my ass. This afternoon, I received a surprise visit from your lover Danny and your daughter Marissa. Why are your things here? It's because you're leaving right now. His face turned pale and the color quickly drained from him. His lips moved, but not a word came out of them. Gabby, let's go inside and we can talk about this. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. No way, idiot. You will never cross the threshold of this house again. Three years, Ronnie. You've been playing me for a fool for three years. You're nothing but a cheating, lying, conniving bastard. Gabby, this is my home. I will not leave. If we could just go inside, sit down and talk. Our marriage is too valuable to be destroyed like this. Please, I love you. Oh yes, you love me so much. You told your girlfriend we're getting a divorce. Our marriage is over. You told her you loved her, not me. You let me go back to work to pay your mistress 500 bucks a week. Fuck you, Ronnie. Don't do this, Gabby. We can figure this out. I know it looks bad, but please, give me a chance to explain. You knew how much I wanted to spend those early years with our children. I never wanted to go back to work. I wanted to be here at home, making connections for life. Come on, Gabby, let's go inside and talk. Give me a chance. Never. You told her that you were divorcing me and that you didn't love me. No, fuck you, Ronnie. If you leave now, and maybe, just maybe, we can talk again in a few days. But not now. He paced along the path like a man possessed. Taking out his phone, he quickly called someone. Then, as I walked inside and locked the door, he began loading his belongings into the back of his truck. 
When he finished, he tried to open the door, but found it locked. He tried to insert his key, only to find that I had inserted mine from the inside. Go away, Ronnie. Damn it, don't act childish. You're making a scene. The damn neighbors are staring at me. It's not fair. No, idiot. What's not fair is that you make your family suffer every week because you're giving our money away. Oh my God, Gabby. If I hadn't done this, she would have sued and I would have had to pay full child support. You're going to have to do it now anyway, you damn idiot. You will pay me too. Gabby, don't make any hasty decisions. I know you're angry, but we can end this. Goodbye, Ronnie. I turned and walked into the living room to collapse in a chair. Only then did it dawn on me. All emotions poured out of me in a torrent. I couldn't hold them back any longer. Memories seeped into my brain. So many good ones. Even just recently when we were struggling to pay the bills. He hugged me and consoled me, saying, We can cope with these difficulties. We can do it. What a sneaky, lying bastard. Ha! It made me think of all the good memories. Were they also lies? How many others were there? Was Danny just the latest? Louise jumped onto my lap, sobbing hysterically. She didn't understand. James stood next to me, his hand stroking my leg. Everything will be fine, Mommy. Why can't Dad come in? I hugged him. Dad and I had a fight, honey. Don't worry, it's not your fault. I called my mom. I needed to hear a friendly voice. She realized that something was wrong. And while we were chatting, it all poured out of me. Fifteen minutes later, she was walking through the front door. She embraced me in her warm, motherly embrace, and a river of tears flowed again. She made us both a cup of tea with some whiskey in it. We sat and talked. As mothers do, she calmed me down and we talked about the future. Life won't be easy for Gabby as a single mother. You know it. Tuition fees alone will make this impossible. I know, Mom. I'll go to court tomorrow and see what help I can get. I'll need a lawyer. I wonder if I will be eligible for legal aid. Honey, you're making the wrong choice. I won't defend that slimy bastard, but you have to think about the kids. It's not just about you, my love. Mom, I won't let him back. I haven't thought about anything else since I found out about it. You're talking about children, and you can believe me. I also took into account their interests in this matter. What kind of role model would he be for them? Cheater, liar, manipulator. For God's sake, Mom, I had to go back to work so he could pay her benefits. Honey, I'm not defending him. He's a fucking terrible person. Your father and I accepted him into our hearts. We were there for you and lent him money that we will obviously never get back. I was thinking about children. Stunned, I stammered. Did you lend him money? Yes, darling. He came to talk to us last year. He explained that things were tight. He didn't want to scare you. He asked for a loan and we gave him money. Oh, damn, Mom. Why didn't you tell me? He asked us not to do this. He was so embarrassed. We wanted to help, dear. We were thinking about you and the children. As far as I'm concerned, he's finished, Mom. I think we'll be better off without him. Yes, perhaps you are right, dear. She sighed, and humility overwhelmed her. She knew me well enough to understand how determined I could be. He was so convincing when he came to borrow money. He was crying, and it was obvious that it was so hard for him. No man wants to borrow money from his wife's parents. He persuaded us. My night was sleepless, but in the morning I woke up with a plan... And what's more, I felt strong. The mother agreed to leave the children and look after them for the next few days. I had a lot to do. The first call was to work and income New Zealand. I had to wait 20 minutes, but when I explained to them what the call was about, they quickly assigned me as an account manager. Fortunately, she was a woman. And when we discussed the matter and the circumstances, she was very understanding. She found out what benefits I would be eligible for, and suggested that I go to the office where they could help me fill out the paperwork. It was like lifting a huge weight. They were amazing. They downloaded documents to apply for divorce. My supervisor was amazing and so experienced. She told me to split our finances now. Their payment was due to appear in the bank the next day as an extraordinary payment. From then on, this will happen every two weeks. Part of the process was giving Ronnie complete information. She looked at me strangely. Gabriel, yesterday there was another woman here who failed a lawsuit against the same man. 
Don't tell me it's Danny Andrews. She nodded. Is this the woman you mentioned? Yes, one and only. I saw the disgust on her face. She wasn't happy. By the time I left the office, I was armed with everything I needed. The next step was to talk to Ronnie. If he agreed, we could just finish filling out the paperwork and everything would go smoothly. If he had contested it, we would have had to go to family court. I didn't worry about it. Adultery may not be illegal in New Zealand, but it made him look very bad. He seemed quite happy when I called him. Gabby, thank God you called. Ronnie, come home after work. We need to talk. Should I take my suitcases? Only if they're empty so you can fill them. Damn, don't be an idiot. We need to talk. We need time together so we can work through this. I know I was stupid, but stop it, Gabby. We have a great marriage. No, we won't do that. After I found out what kind of person you really are, for God's sake, you stole money from my parents. What kind of person are you? I didn't do anything like that. They were kind enough to lend us some money. There was no us in that Ronnie. It was all you. You haven't given them a single cent back. I doubt you ever planned this. Now I doubt everything about you. Just be there at six. When he came in, I was sitting at the table. All the relevant documents were laid out in front of me. The moment he saw them, his smile disappeared, and he just stared at me. Is it really that simple? Yes, it's that simple. Don't do this, Gabby. I screwed up. I know this, but we could survive this. We could try seeing a psychologist. What? Are you kidding? It's like I want to sit in the same room with you. No way. Ronnie, if we can agree on a separation arrangement, we could save a lot of money. If you resist, we will have to go to family court, and all that will do is eat up the money. Believe me, you don't want this. He started rummaging through the papers. He looked at me intently. Every two weekends, is that all I get? If you meet me halfway, then perhaps we can come to an agreement. Fuck you. I will get joint custody. Yes, and how are you going to do it? You'll need a home with at least two bedrooms. You would need to be able to transport your children to and from daycare, and you would have to pay for it. I'll ask your mom to look after them too. I laughed. There's no way you'll do it. If you take one step closer to her now, she will fucking kill you. She won't help you take my children away from me. Oh, and by the way, they want to return the money you borrowed from them, with interest. You'll have to sell the house, Gabby. You can't afford this, he said firmly, even when caring for children. You're wrong, Ronnie, I can. The company has already approved my payment. They helped me fill out all these forms. Lord, you are heartless, he muttered. Yes, it is. Damn it, I made a mistake. Sure, we can talk about this. God, Gabby, I spent so many hours at work, on business trips. Business trips on your own ass. You've never traveled anywhere. The nights that you say you spent on the road were spent with your mistress. Don't worry, she told me everything. You didn't even leave town. You left me to look after the children and maintain the house. You were right here all this time. You left your own children to be with someone else. I didn't leave them. I tried to build a future for us. Liar. I screamed. You're a damn liar. You didn't work late. You were with her. Your children were here and crying because they missed their father, and you were with her. You could be here with them like a real man. Okay, calm down. I made a mistake. It's not the end of the world, Gabby. It happens. If you give me a chance, I will make it up to you. We can consult and talk. I'll be here every evening to help. No, I will be polite to the children. I won't humiliate you. I won't tell them what happened. You and I will never talk again. He grabbed the papers and ran out. You have 21 days to return them. I shouted at his back. God, it felt so good. I felt empowered and strong. Seeing him sitting there with tears streaming down his face warmed my heart. That evening, the mother brought the children home, and of course they wanted to know what was going on. It was hard to see the look of horror on their faces, but it had to be done. James got angry and blamed me. You sent Daddy away. He rushed off to his room. I was helped by my mother, who came in and sat next to him. She explained that Ronnie had done some very bad things, and I had no choice but to send him away. 
Louise sat next to me and we hugged. Several of her high school friends had already gone through divorce proceedings, so she understood. Later, James came and sat with us. Mom joined our group hug, which seemed to ease the pain. Of course, nothing ever goes smoothly. I could afford to pay for the house, but as soon as the costs of food and kindergarten stopped, there's almost nothing left there. We had to give up all the nice things like Sky TV and takeaways. Became a thing of the past. Things were going hard. Over time, I had to take it whenever I could get it. Car maintenance and insurance are gone. Luckily, my little car was reliable, and my father took care of all the maintenance costs. He also helped around the house. He mowed lawns, tended gardens, trimmed hedges. As I looked around, this place had never looked better. I was grateful when I received the separation order in the mail. Ronnie filled it out and agreed to my terms. I found out from my parents that he screwed up. He actually had the nerve to ask my parents for help. Dad laughed in his face and demanded that he pay back the money they had already lent him or they would sue. It's funny how when your world is turned upside down, it lifts you up. I hated Ronnie so much. I didn't feel any guilt for what happened to him. Danny was just as cruel as I was. He was left with nothing. All he could afford was a shitty apartment. He had to sell his Beamer. I have had the great pleasure of selling his golf clubs and all his squash equipment. Strange, but he didn't even try to fight it. I hoped it was his conscience finally showing. Ha, great chance. It didn't take him long to find another girl. God, it disgusted me. He clearly didn't have a high opinion of me. His weekends with the children gradually faded from view. If he had a low opinion of me, he thought even less of them. He unsuccessfully tried to get his payments reduced through the courts. I didn't really care. All he did was fool the government, not me. I received my benefits regardless of whether he paid or not. However, I laughed when his mistress sued him for paying child support to Danny's daughter Marissa. He was so successful in hiding payments to her that he could not prove that he had made them. Two years of maintenance and child support. Now this was going to hurt. It just made me laugh. It took me another year to trust men again. I finally found a good guy and we became close enough to date. It was nice to have a man back in my life, someone I could hold in my arms, with whom you could share your innermost thoughts and moments. Sex, oh God, it felt so good. Ronnie, I believe, was a sensible lover. When I look back at our sex life, I see that he tried very hard, but with my new experience, I learned that he was very selfish. My new man, Price, was such a wonderful lover. He was really enjoying the foreplay. When we made love, he was so generous and caring. He meant my pleasure, not just his own. There were other things, too. He loved giving me foot massages and back rubs. He brought out a side of me that had remained buried with Ronnie. He adored my body. His adoration motivated me to go further with him. He brought me out of my shell. Ronnie was always in such a hurry. He never let me waste my time. It's funny how when you're with someone who showers you with love, you do your best for them. Sex with Price was so amazing that I opened up and we tried things I had never dreamed of. Price created a sensation among children. He idolized them as if they were his own. He never shied away from parental responsibilities. When Ronnie disappeared from our lives, Price rose. When he asked me to marry him, I was over the moon and I wasn't the only one. The children were delighted. They loved having him around. We finally got the man we deserved and Ronnie, well, he got what he deserved too. So many things came to light once the court started investigating him. Danny wasn't the only woman he had an affair with. Add to this that his new girlfriend also got pregnant and he is stuck with another family trying to find funds. He lived in fear because the other woman he was having an affair with was married and her husband was looking for him. When he knocked on my door, I happily told him all the information I had about Ronnie's whereabouts. I live in hope that he will finally catch it. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one.